once said that dogs are not our whole life, but they make our lives whole. And isn't that the truth? Spending time with our dogs is time well spent. I know that I'm not the only one who loves to come home to a furry face and a wagging tail. Between work and life, though, making time to spend with our dogs can sometimes feel like it's just not enough. Well, listeners, National Walk Your Dog Week may have been last week, but today I'm here to tell you why you should always take the time to take your pup around the block. Going for a 15 to 30 minute walk with your dog on a daily basis will make you and your dog healthier and happier. Whether you have the kind of dog who wants to curl up on the couch with you while you relax, or an energetic pup who is your partner on adventures, most dogs have one thing in common. They love going on walks with their human. The American Animal Hospital Association has been trying to get people to walk their dogs more often for many years. They warn dog owners that not walking can cause behavioral and physical issues. They have put in much effort into finding new ways to motivate people to grab the leash and head to the park. You may be asking, what's the big deal? You may have a safe, fenced-in backyard where your dog gets to run around. You may take your best friend to the dog park several times a week. Or you may even use a doggy daycare. More and more people are putting one-on-one walks with their dogs on the back burner thinking that their dogs get more than enough exercise. But there isn't anything quite the same as going on a leashed walk with Fido. There are many benefits for both you and your dog that will come once you start a walking routine. Let's start with the most obvious benefit, bettering you and your dog's physical and even emotional health. Walking with your dog for just 15 to 30 minutes a day helps them get to and manage a healthier weight. The healthier your dog, the longer and happier their life will end up being. It's also a great bonding time for you and your dog that they just don't get while you're working all day. That bonding time is essential if you want to have a great relationship with your dog. If your dog suffers from any sort of anxiety, the bonding time coupled with exercise can truly ease some of their tensions. For us humans, getting in the habit of walking impacts how we feel, how we manage weight, as well as combating countless health issues, such as heart disease, stroke, depression, and anxiety. Abundant research has been done that proves walking for about 30 minutes, even just five days a week, is one of the easiest ways to get healthier. Studies from Harvard University concluded that walking for 30 minutes a day at a very casual pace over the course of a week and doing so on a regular basis can reduce your risk of cardiovascular events by 31%. To top it off, walking simply makes us feel better. Just think about what regular walks can do for your dog. Hopefully, we will get to see more research done from a scientific viewpoint on just how much daily walks truly impact Fluffy's health. If those benefits aren't enough to get you looking for your walking shoes, consider the bond that you can strengthen with your dog. I know that there are many dogs out there that don't have the greatest leash manners. But please, don't let that be the reason that you don't go on walks together. Leash training for many can seem impossible at times. It can take a lot of work. As with any training, persistence and positive reinforcement are the keys to achieving the result you are looking for. Positive training is not only rewarding for you and your dog, but it also strengthens your bond. The more training you work on now, the easier future training will be. Furthermore, the longer you let undesirable habits continue, the more time it will take to break those habits. Know that your dog does indeed want to learn. It's a matter of patience 
and finding training methods that work for your individual dog. What works for one dog may not work for another. If you haven't taken your dog to obedience classes, find one to enroll in. You know the saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Well, that's simply not true. It's never too late to work on training. You just have to put some effort in. There are also different tools that you can use to help make your walks more comfortable while you and your pup work on leash manners. Certain harnesses can make your walks a little less stressful. Harnesses tend to be more comfortable for dogs and take away the pressure on their neck and windpipe. If they do pull, you can use martingale collars. Martingale collars are also great collars to use on dogs that can easily slip out of standard collars. Having a sturdy, non-retractable leash also goes a long way when teaching leash skills. Some leashes have an extra handle towards the bottom to help with teaching your dog to heal, and some can actually attach around your waist to give you a little extra leverage when working with strong dogs or for going on jogs. Always talk to your dog's trainer and your veterinarian about what options are the best for you and your dog. Carry small healthy treats with you to use as a reward. Always, always make sure to tell your dog that he's doing a good job when he's walking properly and say it like you mean it. Dogs feel rewarded when you say they did good with a positive tone in your voice. When they feel rewarded, they are far more likely to exhibit that behavior more often and the happier the both of you will be. Leash manners aren't the only behavior that can improve from daily walks. Many common behavior issues tend to stem from boredom, frustration, and pent-up energy. Walks are a safe way for your dog to get that energy out instead of letting it surface in undesirable behaviors such as more intense or more likeliness to experience separation anxiety, tendencies to not listen or view you as the pack leader, and more tendencies to run amok around your house. Given more exercise, the more likely that your dog will be too tired to say chew on your shoes or scratch at the doors while you run to the store. If you are listening to this and don't have a dog of your own at the moment, never fear. Even if you aren't ready to get a dog right now, you can still take a dog on a walk. Find an animal shelter near you and sign up to become a volunteer. At many shelters, you can come in as few times as once a week or even once a month. But I can assure you that once you start volunteering, you'll probably want to go more than that. It's a great opportunity for you to get walking habits started. And the feeling that you will get from brightening up a shelter dog's life is incredibly rewarding. Who knows? By volunteering, you just may end up meeting your next best friend. Well, listeners, thanks so much for tuning in to Full Circle Animal Healthcare's weekly podcasts. We hope that you do take away something from listening to them, and specifically today, that you will grab your leash and go for a walk with your dog. We're all busy, but I can assure you that if you make the time to start walking your dog, you'll both feel better, and neither one of you will regret it. Until next time... Get outside and enjoy this fall weather with your pup. Thanks again. Take care. Hello, folks. And just as a friendly reminder, the content of this podcast is strictly for informational purposes only. It does not replace advice or judgment by your primary veterinarian. Please see a licensed veterinarian in your area for all veterinary-related questions and concerns.